the Thoughty or Tea podcast. Burnout is subtle, it's long term, and it's really, really debilitating. It is classed as a psychological condition, and generally, it's people feel exhausted, they feel cynical, and really ineffective like any kind of um, any amount of energy that you put into something it's just not having the same results as it usually would yeah there's one book which i have found enormously helpful and i'll just reference it briefly it's the book called how to calm your mind by chris bailey Mm. i picked it up once by complete chance and it was super super helpful so I'm mentioning it that now because in it the author mentions the six triggers of burnout so there's six of them it's workload if you've got too much yeah. work to do you're mm-hmm. going to struggle a lack of control about that workload but also maybe not just what the contents of the work is but when you can do it if you're working shifts for example and you're a morning person but your shifts have been assigned to you into the evening that's going to be a source of tension the opposite in my case are you an evening person (laughs) i am i am a i have a solid night owl there's just no getting away from it i've been through stints of going like long times with uh waking up in the morning but i just it just never works for me do you know it's it's genetic yeah like yeah, the um, chronotypes and stuff. Yes. So your chronotype mm-hmm. preference is genetic. And this just comes to my message of work with yourself, not against yourself. There's so much messaging out there for, oh, be a morning person. Four steps to become a morning person, wake up at five and go <laughs> to the gym. No. That's, it, always, it always just just blows my mind, that kind of thing, because it's not like getting up any earlier is going to give you more time in the day. No. Because... If, if you're an evening person, you know, that person who might be, oh, I feel so great about getting up and getting a workout in at the start of the day, like, <laughs> like I, yourself, maybe. I'm holding <laughs> my hands up now. I am a morning person, regrettably. <laughs> my body wakes me up at six. I can't do anything about it. But but imagine me. The switch. <laughs> yeah. Imagine it turned around where somebody was telling me, oh, Vera, this is what you need to be an evening person have you tried yeah, waking working up in later? the nightclubs <laughs> no 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 you've been a bartender oh my god I've been yeah, a it's, bartender. it's it's interesting out there. i think that that dynamic though because I, I think at the moment there's so much of that like work culture whereby you know people are like glorifying these these perfect schedules and like working loads and one of the aspects is always about getting up in the morning and and doing that kind of thing and i just think because you know as i said there's not there's the exact same amount of time that you would get if you woke up later and went to sleep later like why can't you be the person who goes to sleep later and goes to the gym you know just in the um afternoon or something like it it doesn't make much sense to me it feels uh feels very strange sometimes watching stuff like that that ties into another one of the six triggers so it's the workload lack of control another one Mm -hmm. is fairness Mm. if you're constantly being assaulted by a barrage of unfairness especially as autistic people we're very we're very aware of things being maybe not the way they should be or somebody saying one thing and doing another so that unfairness can have a big big impact yeah. The other ones are insufficient reward. So if you're not being paid adequately, but socially as well, if your team aren't acknowledging the work you do, you are going to struggle. You, you might not have a team, so you are a fr- freelancer mainly, right? So socially, you, you want to be able to see that kind of reward. Yeah, it it sounds like a lot of these points that you're bringing up are very much like pretty much core to to being a content creator mm-hmm. <laughs> like every little reward you know you've got to work a lot you don't see much success in the short term and no. it's a very long process <laughs> no, see, seeing those outcomes is a big part of the insufficient reward it's definitely something that i feel i've recently changed jobs and i'm really really enjoying my new job but you don't see Good. the work that you're doing immediately yeah. and that's absolutely normal it's just part of life 
So I need to do other things where I can see my rewards, uh, my, my outcomes basically instantaneously, whether that's making making an illustration or doing a bit of gardening. Yeah. I, I'd say say for me, that's probably going going to the gym and getting all pumped up with blood from, from workouts. <laughs> that's yeah. my instantaneous reward of the day. <laughs> yeah. Do you measure how you're improving? Do you race against yourself? Oh, I, I, I don't like, um, I know there's some people who go and like, like measure themselves and do like body fat tests and stuff like that. But, um, I think for me, it's mostly just, you know, if I can add like one more repetition of a movement every, every week that I go, I'm like, cool. Yeah. Um, sometimes works, but then like if I drop by one or it's the same, I'll be like, Oh my God, everything, the life is, is so hard on me. And it, it has such a massive impact on my day. Yeah, it's how we measure that success is something that I'm going to, would definitely like to talk about towards the end. Mm. Um, it, it's it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What's the last thing? The last things are lack of community, which we've sort of touched upon already, and our values. Big thing. Yeah. Big thing at the moment. Um, with the atomization of people, you know, everyone community community groups sort of in in your physical area are very very much dwindling especially for like the younger generation mm. um i think that's a big big contributor yes you know yeah you, you see a lot online of a lot of uh people being very sort of insular and and well i suppose fairly like myself except that i do go out to the gym so it's i get i get a little bit of exposure to the outside world but i do hear a lot from people that like agoraphobia and not being able to go outside is quite a big issue especially mm -hmm. for a lot of autistic people. 